Assalamu alaikum. Hello the students. Today I am going to start your third card of biochemistry. That is renal, body fluid, electrolytes and acid base balance. You see that here are four topics in this card. First one is the renal biochemistry. Second one is the electrolyte. Third one is the body fluid. And the fourth one is the acid base balance. I will discuss you about the electrolytes. In electrolytes, we will read about some electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, phosphate with their hemostasis in our body. First of all, we know a little bit about the body fluid. And the body fluid means the fluid inside our body. And this is a major portion in our body. It is different in different people depending in the age sex in a 70 kg adult male it is approximately 42 liter or 60 percent of the total body weight this 42 liter of body fluid is again divided into two major compartments in our body termed as body fluid compartments there are two body fluid compartments in our body number one extracellular fluid compartment or ecf Number 2. Intracellular Fluid Compartment or ICF Extracellular fluid compartment contains one third of the total body water that is 14 liter or 20% of the total body fluid and intracellular fluid compartment contains 28 liter that means 40% of the total body fluid. Extracellular fluid means the fluid that is outside the cell. And intracellular fluid means the fluid that remains inside the cell. Now we discuss about the electrolyte composition of this body fluid compartments. It is also termed as chemical makeup of the body fluid. In this electrolyte composition we will see different electrolytes like sodium, potassium, calcium, magnesium, chloride, bicarbonate with their concentration in ECF and ICF. These anions and cations are present both in ECF and ICF but in different concentration. Like sodium though present in both ECF and ICF but it is called the major cation in ECF as it is present in greater concentration in ECF than in ICF. Like also potassium also called the major cation in ICF as it is present in major concentration in ICF than in ECF. Likely chloride is the major anion of ECF and phosphate is the major anion of ICF. Now start about homeostasis. What do you mean by homeostasis? Homeostasis means maintaining static or constant environment within the body and this is maintained by the maintaining normal range of electrolytes within the body. In sodium homeostasis, we see how sodium is maintained in normal range in our body. Our normal body sodium content is 3500 to 4500 ml. And this sodium is distributed in ECF majority portion that is greater than or equal to 90% and in ICF less portion that is less than or equal to 10%. Then come about sodium balance. Balance is obtained when intake is equal to output or excretion. In case of sodium balance, sodium intake is 100 to 200 per day and it is obtained by foods, drinks, added salts and excretion is also 100 to 200 millimole per day. And it is excreted through the three different routes that are through urine, through feces and through sweat. Among which urinary route is the major excretory route of sodium. Now come about how the sodium is regulated within our body. Since most of the body sodium lies in ECF, so ECF volume is regulated as the 
direct function of body sodium content. Although body has no sensor to recognize the body sodium status directly, body can sense it indirectly by sensing the ECF volume status through baroreceptors. Recognition of sodium status through baroreceptors signals the kidney through various mechanisms to retain salt and water in case of sodium deficit or decreased ECF volume or to excrete salt and water in sodium deficit or increase ECF volume. Therefore, body regulates sodium balance or ECF volume through afferent and efferent limbs. What is afferent limb or sensor or sensing mechanism? Baroreceptors present in atria, carotid sinus, aortic arch, great veins and afferent arteriole of kidney act as afferent limb. These baroreceptors are stimulated by hypervolumia. Hypervolumia means increased body sodium content due to increased fluid portion in the body. And in baroreceptors are inhibited by hypovolumia. That means decreased body fluid also associated with decreased body sodium content. Then come about the efferent limb or effector organ. Here kidney acts as effector organ to respond to the volume status that is body sodium content by renal sodium chloride retention or excretion and its regulation. Following excess intake of sodium chloride, hypervolumia develops which stimulates baroreceptors. Stimulated baroreceptors cause inhibition of sympathetic nervous system and also inhibition of renin angiotensin aldosterone system but increase the secretion of atrial natriuretic peptide present in heart. Sympathetic inhibition causes decreased catecholamine release. Catecholamine means epinephrine nor epinephrine which decreased sodium chloride reabsorption. It also causes renal vasodilatation and increased glomerular filtration rate leading to aldosterone escape. Inhibition of renin angiotensin aldosterone system causes decreased production of renin angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. All these events finally cause decreased renal sodium chloride reabsorption leading to salt and water excretion to cause normovolumia by decreased catecholamine, increased atrial natriuretic peptide, decreased aldosterone, decreased androgensin 2 and increased glomerular filtration rate and aldosterone escape. Following reduced intake of sodium chloride, hypovolumia develops which inhibits baroreceptors. Inhibited baroreceptor causes stimulation of sympathetic nervous system and renin angiotensin aldosterone system but decreased secretion of atrial natriuretic peptide. Here the reverse things occur that occurs in decreased sodium chloride intake. Here sympathetic stimulation causes increased catecholamine release, increased sodium chloride reabsorption, renal vasoconstriction and decreased glomerular filtration rate leading to failure of aldosterone escape. Stimulation of renin angiotensin aldosterone system causes increased production of renin angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. All these events finally cause increased renal sodium chloride reabsorption leading to salt and water retention to cause normovolumia and this occurs by increased catecholamine, decreased atrial nitritic peptide, increased aldosterone, increased angiotensin 2 and decreased glomerular filtration rate and failure of aldosterone escape. These are all about today. Thank you.